All right. Welcome, everyone. Uh, it is Wednesday, the 2nd of March. That means two months are done in the year. Uh, I calculated on my calculator this morning. That means 16.66666% of the year is done. Um, so that is an exciting time. If you were still in hibernation, uh, you should be out, uh, particularly here in Melbourne. And I know it was the same in Sydney. Um, the uh, sort of recommendation not to be working in the office has gone. Uh, masks in the office are gone, which means that everybody should be back now. I know it has been great in the last few days to see uh, the number of cars on the roads get bigger and bigger here in the city. Um, and we're obviously seeing everyone starting to get back to normal life. So that's very exciting. All right, welcome to everyone on Facebook. We should be live there now as well. So um, thank you for joining us. And I look forward to giving you a big session. Um, those of you that tuned in last week will know that I did uh, say that we might, or perhaps I might have promised even, that we'd be going live onto one of our construction sites. Um, as it turns out, we weren't quite able to make that happen today, uh, mainly because it was raining this morning and no one wanted to get wet. Uh, I think they're a little bit weak. I would have gone out in the rain, but of course, they thought it might be a bit hard with the cameras. As it turns out right now, it's a beautiful sunny day, so we will postpone that until next week. Um, so if you were looking forward to that, don't despair. We will be doing that again next week. All right. So first up, um, as always, I just want to get you um, warmed up and started. Most of you are probably having lunch right now. So um, tuck in, enjoy. But I want to just remind everyone that I guarantee all of you are either suffering or have suffered from this problem. And that is, how do you buy a home that you can afford that's right for you um, and that adds long-term value to your life without making a mistake. So it's a pretty simple proposition, something you can afford, something that's right for you and something that's going to add long-term value. Now, it does sound simple, but I know all of you would have suffered from that um, and will be continuing to suffer from that problem time and time again. Um, now, it's not easy to solve, but... The thing about today's session is that there is a solution. Um, and that's what I want to go through with everyone today. I won't be able to solve it for you straight away, um, but today's session is all about giving you a bit of a framework and explaining as to how you can uh, you know, arm yourself with the tools to be able to get through that so that you don't get caught procrastinating and not actually making any moves. So before I get into that, um, those of you who might be wondering who is Salvo, if you haven't joined us before, uh, we have a number of different businesses, but ultimately, we're all about helping you create a home. Um, so everything that we do here across our various businesses and all of the big team here are all about helping you create a home. Um, it didn't come easy, but we've learned that everyone is looking for assistance at various parts on the road. So, you know, right from whether you're a first home buyer, you know, you might even just be moving out of home and looking for a rental property for the very first time. Um, through to people that are upgrading their home, downsizing, or investors that might be buying their first investment property or their second, third, or fourth investment property. Today has got something for you. And as an organization, we're all about helping you no matter where you are on that journey. And that's why we've got that primary goal of about making sure that we're creating a home for you. All right. So the solution I talked about before, it's very, very straightforward and it's simple. There are three key pillars in the framework. Okay, so number one is find. So what I mean by that is you've got to find the right home. So it's not just as simple as going out, having a look at a few open homes and saying, yes, I like this home. You've got to work out, is it the right property for your lifestyle? Um, is it the right type of home for the time that you've got involved? You know, are you getting a, a, a renovator's delight when you don't have time to do the renovation? Um, is it the right number of uh, bedrooms, bathrooms, right position on the block? Um, in the right location that you like. There's various things and it's really, really important that you get that right, okay? Number two is finance. Now, the great thing about owning a home um, and real estate in general is that it is the easiest asset to use other people's money. So, you know, the first thing we think of, banks are always happy to lend against your home. Um, you can get money from mum and dad. Um, you can buy it jointly with friends or family. Um, so you've got to get that finance structure right because... Even if you find the right home, if you don't get the financing structure right, it may not be as good an experience as you were hoping. The third pillar is manage. 
Now, manage in part puts all of this together, but it's how do you actually, you know, keep that home through its full life cycle. So, you know, it can be as simple if you're an investor about how do you actually manage the property in terms of collecting the rent from your tenant, um, attending to repairs and maintenance. If it's your own home, um, how are you going to uh, deal with repairs and maintenance? You know, how are you going to, uh, you know, make sure that the property continues to deliver for what you thought you bought it for and how you first sought that property out um, and really putting that all together. So the reason I call these three pillars rather than a, a step-by-step process, albeit I've got some arrows going, is that you don't just do this once um, and you can focus on different pillars at different stages in your journey. But ultimately what you've got to do and how you will solve that problem is you've got to continue to do this over and over and over. Um, and that is continually look and refine at each one of these pillars and each one of these steps. And that is how you will have the solution and you will not be stuck procrastinating and stuck on that problem. All right. Now, hopefully that's got you thinking, that's got you warmed up. Uh, if you're excited and you want to think, how do you move forward quicker and faster than this, um, hang around to the end. I will run through that with you. Um, and I've got some exciting uh, opportunities that I can help you with. However, um, before we get to that, I do want to get into the main part of today's um, session. So what we're going to go through today is uh, three parts. The first part, I'm going to give you a quick snapshot of what I've seen happening around the countryside uh, in 90 seconds. Now, it might be 120 seconds, but I am going to try and stick to 90 seconds. Um, the second part is where we get you behind the scenes, the in-depth analysis um, on some great topics. So today we're talking about stamp duty. Um, I've even brought a prop, which I'm excited to, uh, to try and use. Um, it may or may not work very well. We're also going to talk about some of the benefits of buying a new home and an off-the-plan home as well. So there are a couple of topics that I know uh, a lot of you have been asking about. So hopefully we can provide you more guidance on that. That'll go for about 20 or so minutes. Um, and that's really where I want you to focus, you know, turn your phone off, put it on silent um, and give us your undivided attention because I guarantee if you do, that's where you'll get tremendous value. Um, and then lastly, as I said, those of you that are wanting to think, how do you put all of this together and move forward um, faster, better, quicker, um, so that you really don't get stuck on that problem, um, I'll set out a bit of a framework and a pathway as to how you can get that through. Now, as I said before, uh, today's session is for everyone. Um, it doesn't matter where you are on that journey, you know, whether you're just at the start of your home ownership journey or you're buying your third or fourth investment property. Um, today's session has something that will help all of you. So... What have I seen happening around the countryside? Well, there's been a lot, but these are some of the key things that I've seen. Um, and this is really where I think it's important to you to, to have an, a, a keen sense as to what's been happening um, so that you can spot the trends and be ready to um, you know, take action when some of those triggers that are right for you appear. Um, but just generally as well, it's good to know what's going on. So I'm going to start the timer. Um, those of you that see this down here, it'll be on all the slides. I'm going to try and stick to it. So we are away. All right. Um, so number one theme that I saw happening was talking about what is in store for the housing market in 2022. Um, now, it's pretty important to have a good understanding of this. So there's uh, eight key trends that I've seen. Um, there is going to be more balance this year. Um, sorry, was the sound right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, more balance uh, in terms of housing market. We're perhaps going to see, uh, you know, what I'm saying in terms of listings versus um, number of buyers out there. Um, price growth is probably not going to be as strong as it was last year. However, it's still going to be very strong. Definitely an upgraders market. Now, the reason why I say that is that if you currently have a home, you would have seen that tremendous growth. So that changeover is going to be a lot easier than for first home buyers that are jumping in. Um, definitely going to make a comeback after having. Um, a very hard start to uh, the last couple of years. Um, investors, they're slowly going to start coming back um, as the rent starts to get better. Um, occupancy is better. Um, Southeast Queensland, as always, um, a lot of chat about how it's going to go with the Olympics coming in. Um, and regional markets, whilst they've been popular, um, I think it's those that are within commutable distance that will continue to be strong. Um, and interest rates are obviously the trend they're going to be going up. All right, I've got a few seconds left. The timer is going to go. Um, I also wanted to just touch on the auction results from last week, if I can bring those up. 
Um, so we saw a really strong, uh, there was almost 3,400 auctions. So Super Saturday in both Sydney and Melbourne, that was the biggest number of auctions in February since records were done about 15 years ago um, and 70% generally uh, and above across the board. So again, very strong for this time of the year. And those of you that were fearing that perhaps as more uh, properties came to the market that we wouldn't be seeing those strong clearance rates, they're still definitely there. Okay, that's it. I went over a little bit. Um, I apologize. There's a few things that I didn't touch on. However, we're going to jump into the main part. So first of all, we're going to talk about stamp duty. Um, so Greg is going to come and join us. He's going to give us an overview. Um, we're going to get stuck into it. And as I said, um, I'm going to try something new as well as we get into it. So Greg, come yeah. on in. Yeah. Hi, Matt. Good. Good Hi, to everybody. see you again. Yep. All right. So stamp duty. Yep. Um, you know, I liken it to the days uh, when I was younger and fresher and going to a nightclub and having to pay the door fee. Yep. It's sort of that entry fee. It's your rite of passage to get to, in. To get in. Um, but it's a complex topic and there's a lot of uh, benefits and negatives yep. with it. So, you know, how do you, how do you help our viewers okay. get a better understanding? What are the things they should be looking out for? Well, the key thing is understanding you know, stamp duty is based around what, what is deemed as dutable value. Yep. Okay. Now, to understand dutable value is not that hard, but, and we'll simplify it very carefully. When you buy a property that's completed and you're the contract price, you say 600000 that's the dutable value. Okay. Okay. I'm just going to jump up to my board, my props. So those of you that have mentioned um, or been listening, I was very excited. Um, so we're going to talk about... Dutable value, yep. and that's specific here to when we're talking about stamp duty and what Greg's talking about. Yep. So, you know, we talk about the purchase price and then dutable value. Okay. Yep. So you're saying, Greg, you know, we've got... Um, In an exist something that's completed. Yep. The purchase price is the dutable value. Okay. So we say it's a $600,000 contract. Yep. Your dutable value is 600000 On which you would pay stamp duty on. Okay. Okay. So this is the figure here, Greg's saying, is where you pay stamp duty. Stamp duty, correct. And then we'll get through the various things that apply to that. Now, where you get a, get a differentiation is where you buy something off the plan. Mm -hmm. Then the, the dutable value is actually just the land component, not the construction. And that can be a huge advantage if you're buying something off the plan. So... <laughs> So tell them the numbers, Greg. <laughs> so on a, if you bought off the plan yep. and the purchase price was 600K, whatever it is, the dutable value would only be 25% of that in a circa. So that's about 150,000. 150,000. So then you look at what the potential savings is huge. So, you know, in round numbers here, I've done the maths because I knew Greg was coming up with this. Mm -hmm. You know, we're talking somewhere in the vicinity of you know, $33,000 in stamp duty here on $600,000. When we move to $150,000, it's about $4,000. Simple maths. I'll tell you what that equals. $29,000 of saving in your pocket. Yeah. So, you know, I think... Dutable value sounds like a complicated word, Greg. In fact, you almost lost me with it. Just before this, we're arguing as to how to spell it. Um, so I think that I've got it right. But this is really an important thing, isn't it, Greg? Because that, that's a huge saving. Now, when we get into the various things, like we talked about first homeowners, they get no stamp duty up to 600,000 dutable value. All right, so, so hang on, just before we yeah. move on to that. Yeah. So for everyone on the line today, Greg's now going to tell you other incentives and ways that you can you can leverage this but yeah. the number one thing to remember everything sits around what we call here DV. this dutable value yeah okay so keep that in mind yep. all right greg so tell okay. us what are the the different sort of concessions and how okay. that might so pan out looking at those figures if you were a first homeowner and you bought an, an existing property you would if you didn't want to pay any stamp duty you would look for something around six hundred thousand because then you would pay no stamp duty Okay, so a first home buyer 
has no stamps up to 600k of dutable value dv okay so if they if they buy an existing property if you bought an existing property and the purchase price was that you would pay no stamp duty if it was over that you'd pay that however that's why off the plan can so be straight away you're yeah. making a saving of 30 plus thousand dollars thousand by by buying you got you've got that that saving okay now this allows because if you look if why it's a good idea for a first time owner to sometimes look at it off the plan you could buy something substantially bigger and more expensive and still no pay pay no stamp duty because we're looking at what we discussed the dutable value which is quite important So if you have a look at that there, you could potentially get a, a million dollar property and still no pay stamps. So I've gone to the extreme here. Greg was being uh, cautious. Cautious, yeah. But Greg explained at a $600,000 or less beautiful value, as a first home buyer, you pay no stamp duty. Now I know for most of you that are first home buyers, Thinking about a $2.4 million first home is out of reach mm. and might sound ridiculous, but this is just to give you an idea. Uh, this dutable value why it's so important is that you can then go and buy something far more expensive. Um, and if you could afford that, now don't think that many first home buyers could. You know, stamp duty on something like this is about $130,000, $140,000. Dutable value, because you're buying off the plan, it's only $600,000. So that is a yeah. massive saving. Uh, may not be enough, I think, Greg, for most of our first time buyers to still <laughs> to, do that. But still, it shows but you that's, how... That's the skew, isn't it? It just shows you how important duty of value is and understanding stamps is all based around the DV. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that's for first home buyers. Yep. Uh, so obviously, regardless of any property, there's no stamp duty up to 600000 Yep. Uh, there's an even bigger boost if yes. they were to buy something off the plan. Because that dutable value sits at about 25% of your purchase, purchase price. price. Um, and we've just given an extreme example. Now, the other one, so we've, we've talked first homeowners. The other one's owner-occupiers. Yep. So if you're, if you've got, if you're, if you're an um, owner-occupier, there's also concessions, again, based on dutable value. Okay. So that's, uh, I think, it's usually around about half the, you know, half the stamp duty if you're a... a, a um, owner occupier of the property and you've already had a property before you st there are still concessions if you're an owner occupier okay so for those of you that are unsure when greg's saying owner occupier basically means you're yeah. in the home yeah. um, it's your principal place of residence yeah. which is what most people do so this suitable value greg that we talked about before yeah. here and maybe just for everyone who just tuned in it really only comes into play when you're buying something off the plan right. yeah. um, otherwise your purchase price is the dutable value. But 99% of the time is going to be the dutable, dutable value. Dutable value. Yep. It's really only this quirk yep. that we've got here in Victoria that the dutable value is assessed on what Greg explained, the land component component. as it relates to an off the plan property. Now, there's also been some changes over the time that originally as an owner occupier, you only got concessions up to 550,000. That's been extended to a million dollars. So that again, as if you're an owner occupier, you're going to get concessions up. You can buy something up to a million dollars. Okay, so you can buy a one million dollar home, home, and still qualify for the the, plus the plan. That might be only a dutable value of, of two hundred and fifty thousand. Correct. Very little stamps again. So you know, in round numbers. Greg, I'll do the maths for you because I know you don't like being put on the spot. <laughs> yeah. You know, we're talking about $55,000 on a million dollar home on $250,000. We're talking about $10,000. So in simple maths, that's about a $45,000 saving if you're looking to buy your next home to live in. So you don't qualify for the first home buyers. But you can still leverage this concept of dutable value if you do decide to buy an off-the-plan property. Third one, which we, we wouldn't even cover, because an investor previously, if you're an investor, you pay, done. You're rich, you can afford it. There's a concession right now at the moment. If you're an investor, there's a 50% reduction in stamp duty, but let me clarify that, only in certain areas. So Melbourne, 
CBD and surrounds, i.e. South Bank. Come and talk to us. But if you're an investor now, beforehand, you, even if you bought off the plan, there were no concessions. We now have this limited window where there is a 50% reduction in stamp duty, and that's huge. And Greg, that applies to everyone. So yeah. first home buyers, owner-occupiers, owner -occup investors. Everything like that. So if you're a, if you're a first homeowner, you'd, you'd, look at, you'd look at the two and see where you're going to get the best savings, and you use those as a... Uh, but it only applies to certain areas in Melbourne. So again, first homeowners, we've talked about location and stuff. Here it is an opportunity, if it works out better, to, make, to get look, look at the concessions and, and buy in one of these prime locations. Okay. Yeah. So, Greg, I think what I take away from here, and hopefully for a lot of our viewers, is that um, stamp duty is a fact of life. There's yep. no getting around it. Yep. Perhaps for those of you that are first home buyers, um, you might get around it for your first home, but your next home is always going to attract it. You're going to... But there are ways, and particularly what we've seen here, is by buying off the plan mm -hmm. yep. that you can leverage yourself in such a way that you can pay considerably less stamp duty. Yep. Um, the other alternative, as you said, yep. and it doesn't have to be off the plan property, mm -hmm. um, it just has to be a brand new property, property. Uh, here in the um, uh, council area of Melbourne, Melbourne. Um, that you'll have 50% off the stamp duty. Absolutely. So, you know, for example, this $1 million home we said was 55000 yep. Um, You know, that should come down to about 22000 So, and again, you're making a substantial saving, saving if you couldn't otherwise... And buy any of these by buying into one of these these prime locations, and I think you said we're going, Lucas, are going to go through those details. But just you know, in in, in summary, we call dutable value is critical. But you can see how that all works out. That sometimes buying off the plan is substantially a better option because of those those uh, incentives. Okay. Yeah. Um, now, Greg, I just saw on the screen there's a couple, quite a few questions coming through from people. I don't think we'll get to it all. Yep. Um, but as a general uh, thought here, stamp duty, 5.5%. Mm -hmm. Your advice to most people is that they need to allow for that Yes. Um, and shouldn't rely on getting these concessions. Yes. But obviously, if they can follow our three pillars, they yes. probably will end up with a property that, that matches their criteria that they can leverage these. Absolutely. So you, you budget for it, but knowing that there are these incentives which allow you to get some additional savings at, that ultimately create the wealth you're looking for. Okay. And uh, what does the state government do with this money? Don't start with me. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't get me political. We don't want that. We don't want that live. All know, right. So. <laughs> All right. Um, Greg, thank you. Um, thank you. That was good. Uh, hopefully the prop went well and I didn't confuse you no. too much. <laughs> All right. Okay. Great. Thank you. All right. So, um, hopefully I gave you an insight into stamp duty. I know it was a little bit hard. I don't know how that came up on the screen, if my drawings you could even see. Um, if not, we'll obviously try and get uh, some more detail out. But feel free to reach out um, if you've got any further questions on that. Um, what I want to do now, as I said, is just transition into Greg's given us a good understanding as to how you might be able to, um, to best benefit from stamp duty. Um, so Lucas is going to come in and actually talk to us about uh, some of the other general benefits of buying a brand new home and or an off the plan home that can help you understand how that could be the right fit for you. Remember our, our three pillars of finding, financing and managing, all of those come into play now. Um, and so I'll get Lucas to come on and give us a bit of an overview. Come in, buddy. Hi, how's it going? Um, good to see you back in the office after you're off Thank eating you. the prawns, um, you know, last, uh, last week. <sighs> Any chills, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of us were stuck here um, with nothing. So. You know, Greg ran us through those numbers. Um, I just sort of introduced and said that you're going to give us a bit of a, a behind the scenes and an understanding as to why a new property and or an off the plan property could be the right fit for, um, for all our viewers here. So how do you, um, how do you sort of outline to that? To them? Look, I mean, uh, fresh paint, stylish designs, um, amenities, you know, what is there not to like about buying something brand new? Uh, and we it's a bit like clothes. You don't particularly like going to the, the Salvation Army store and getting secondhand clothes if you can buy a new one, do you? Exactly, exactly. And it shows on the inquiry that we've been receiving. In Melbourne alone, we've had an increase for new home search jump up 107% in 
year on year. So that, that's huge. Everybody is looking for a, for a new property. Um, and do you think that's sort of coming a little bit as well? Um, you know, we, we talk a lot or we hear a lot in the media um, and from commentators about people wanting more space, wanting a home office, spending more time, going regional, but perhaps what's not being said is that, you know, being in a home that's got proper insulation, got soundproofing, got air conditioning, um, got amenities, got great places you can go is close to things that, that you get with a new build is, is kind of part and parcel with what we expect in today's life, isn't it? Exactly, exactly. And, you know, and, and it's suitable for everybody. You know, for a non-occupier, who doesn't want to move into something brand new without having to worry about any short-term repairs? You know, for the investor, they've got huge benefits. We talk about stamp duty, there's depreciation. Um, you know, there's something for everybody um, to like for buying a brand new property. Now, I'm not going to because we don't have the time. I felt excited then. What Luke has touched on with depreciation, I want to jump up and do a work example. But, but just quickly because he's, being, um, he's skipped over it a little bit there. Depreciation on a brand new home. Um, you get full depreciation. As soon as you buy secondhand, you don't get any of those benefits. So that can be huge. You know, that's 15, 20, um, you know, up to maybe 30 grand in tax deductions that you're missing yeah. out on every year as an investor, which can make a big, big difference to your cash flow. That's correct. That's correct. And whatever as well as not you, doing the maintenance. And whatever you don't need, it accumulates onto the next year and onto the next year and it just keeps on growing. Is that why you're looking so healthy and so rich? Because you've got all these tax deductions from depreciation and, and you're able to, to enjoy life. That's right. Be like me. Buy off the plan. <laughs> <laughs> all right. But look, uh, I can go through some sort of benefits. Yep. I've, I've got some things dotted down. Hit, hit us with it. I think we've got okay. time. First of all is the location. Okay, many of the new properties, uh, they're built on central locations, close to transport and all the amenities. So, um, you know, and there's a lot of us that want to ditch the car driving, being stuck 45 minutes going to work every day, and just want to take a, a little stroll to work. And, and that's why we've got the walking score. And a lot of the new projects have got a pretty high walking score. Yep. Uh, number two is the views. Okay, I mean, if you're living on a ground floor apartment or on a bedroom, or not, on a house, sorry, uh, if you're on the ground, it's very hard to imagine what our beautiful city looks like from even 15 levels up. Yeah, I think um, it's even as simple as, you know, nowadays everything is floor to ceiling glass windows as opposed to little pokey square windows that you were used to in, in old, old homes. That's right. And for those people that like the natural light and they want to be north facing or east facing, and, and you know, they're, they're, they're on a two story house or something, or level two or three, imagine if you were level 20 or 30, how much more natural light will be coming into your property. Um, you know, all like me, living on, 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 on level 46, having my coffee every morning, and with every sip I take in, I enjoy the breathtaking views that our city offers. So, views are important. Uh, number three is, is you have more time to save. So obviously, when you purchase off the plan that those that don't know, you're only required to pay 10% at the time of signing and the balance you pay when the property is ready. And most of these high-rise buildings can take anywhere between 12 to 24 months to get built. So that gives you more time to save money, which means you have a, a lesser debt when it comes time to borrowing. So basically, you sort of, you don't, have to have achieved your savings goal by the time you purchase. You can lock in your purchase, lock it in at today's prices with the, the safety that you know you've got another couple of years that you can continue to save um, up towards that, that final payment you've got to make. Correct. And also, if you have an existing property that you need to sell, it gives you that huge amount of time to prepare yourself and your property presented to the as best that you can for the time to put it on the market. Number four, Time is money. So I say that to you all the time. But I as you mentioned, you sort of stole it from me a second ago, that you purchase in today's property price. Okay. So you're yep. paying the price for today's market. By the time the property is uh, built, completed in one and a half or two years, especially in a buoyant market, you've already made a profit. So start gaining equity. From the moment you sign on the dotted line, although you haven't paid the full amount. Shiny and new. 
come on, who doesn't like brand new and shiny? Um, also, when you buy brand new property, which off the plan, you get a minimum 90 day maintenance. So that means anything that needs to be fixed um, will be taken care of. So, so you don't have any of the worries of an old or secondhand property uh, comes with. Incentives. So of course, uh, Gregory Pryor mentioned some uh, stamp duty savings, but also when you buy off the plan, you usually have uh, a lot of developer incentives. Mm -hmm. And that could be upgrades, blinds, a number of different things. Um, of course, you've got the depreciation, which you touched on before. Yep. And if you're a first home buyer, you also get the 10,000. You got the grant that's, that's available, which is currently 10,000, but that changes from time to time. So always make sure you're up to date with what's offered to you. Now, I don't know whether I'm stealing one of your future ones, but, but I guess on that um, as well, you sort of, depending on what stage you buy in at, you also sort of get some flexibility to choose some of your finishes, some color schemes. Uh, okay, I've oh, stolen your point. <laughs> you did. Anyway, that was my next point. <laughs> so look, making the floor plan work for you. So when you purchase off the plan, um, first of all, you've got a number of different options or different uh, layouts of apartments. So you can choose the one that works best for you. Also, usually you're given the option to choose a color scheme. So, you know, there, there could be one, two or three color options available where you get to choose. And with some developers like yourselves, actually, um, when you buy early of the plan, you're able to make minor changes internally that would suit your lifestyle yeah. better. So, you know, that's things like extra PowerPoints. Um, you know, extra. if you're a mad gamer, you might want 10 PowerPoints on the wall. That's right. Um, you can have all those there ready so you can stick all your monitors up on day one. You know, bigger wardrobe, whatever might be the case. So a lot of those things that we're happy to do and we've been doing for years for our purchases, actually. Okay. Um, now, a lot of things, this thing, a lot of people don't really think about it, but it's the, the thousands of dollars you can save by using the amenities that are available within your building. So, you know, I mean, you've got pools, bars, steam rooms, gyms, outdoor common facilities, barbecue areas. So, I, I mean, a gym membership alone can cost you to many hundreds or, or even thousands of dollars per year. So here, having everything inside your building. I can tell you haven't been to a gym for a while. It's many hundreds, even thousands a month, not, uh, not a year. How you keep well, you so go. slim and trim, but I mean, because that's a big thing. I choose to live in a place that has amenities. So I've <laughs> never paid a gym membership. Um, now I didn't see you there at uh, 6 a.m. this morning when the rest of us were there. I was walking my dog, that's right. why. <laughs> um, Future-proof homes. So when you buy a brand new property, like you said before, your insulation your soundproofing, um, NBN ready, uh, all these things that, that you know, we're used to and, and, and we all want to have, um, you know, it's all taken care of. And best of all, it's all body corporate taken care of. So you don't have to lift a finger for the life of you living and using that home. Yep. And, and look, last but not least, um, Lower power bills. New properties have to abide by the energy efficiency requirements as required by the Australian Building Code. So that means power saving appliances, gas, water, and electricity systems uh, all there. You've got the latest of the latest and, and saves you hundreds, if not thousands of dollars per year. Good. I was about to steal that point. I thought I'd wait and see. Thank but you. definitely, I think, you know, it's Today, more and more people are, are more and more concerned about the environment um, and energy and so forth. So, so not only have you done something good for the environment through the new build and, and the construction techniques and the materials, but the ongoing operation of that building, you know, consumes a lot less power, um, doesn't create the same sort of greenhouse gases as the older buildings do. Um, so, you know, you can feel good environmentally as well from buying new as well as good in your hip pocket. Your That's it. It's a win-win situation. All right. And who do they call if they're excited? Lucas Karras. You'll find my name and numbers everywhere, all over the internet. All right. Good, <laughs> good. All right, Lucas. Thank you. Thank you very um, much. Thank you. Hopefully we'll see you again next week. Thank you. All right, everyone. So hopefully that gave you a good insight into two of those key topics. Um, now, as I said, uh, next week, 
hopefully the weather will be um, strong and we'll be able to get out and onto one of our sites. So it is exciting. We do do some, um, some videos for those purchases in some of our buildings, but I know it's what a lot of you have been asking for in terms of getting a bit of a better understanding um, generally what happens on a construction site. Um, so one of my colleagues, Colin, will be coming live from one of our current construction sites and uh, I'll be compiling everyone's questions and where we can, we'll actually show you. So rather than just talk, we'll try and take you through um, some of those uh, building techniques and or key things that you might never normally see because they're covered up or they're behind the scenes um, as much as we can. So feel free to drop uh, us a line with any of the questions you've got or anything you'd like to see. Um, we'll obviously do this regularly because we won't get through them all, um, but so really looking forward to that next week. Okay. So that is it in terms of behind the scenes. Now, what I wanna to talk to you about is how do you move forward from here? Okay, so as I said at the start of today's um, show, we are 16.66% into 2022. So those of you that are living in the past and still thinking about 2021, it is gone. It's a new year, it's a new game, it's a new mindset. You need to be focused and you need to be moving forward both positively but making the changes that you need to have in your life so that you do hit the goals that you didn't get to last year. So what do I mean by that? Well, look, you've got a choice as to where you go from here. And unfortunately, time and time again, what most of you will do is you'll do nothing. Okay. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, you might've had great insight from today. You might've enjoyed it. You might've not fallen asleep. You might have even invited some of your friends and said, you know what, I've got some great insight. But for most of you, you're not actually going to go and make those changes by learning this information, going out there and leveraging these things that you can and getting uh, the best outcome for yourself. Now, how do I know that? Because if you don't make a change, you're not going to see a different result. So you've been looking to upgrade your home for the last few years, looking to buy your first home, whatever it is, and you still haven't, well, then you need to make a change. So don't do nothing. So what I implore all of you to do at a bare minimum is to go out there, take on board what I've said, make those changes, take that big plunge, jump on board and get involved. And whatever it is that you want to do, whether it's a first home, an investment property, or upgrading your home, go out there and do it. Um, take on board all of the insights we've given you. Um, and think about my three pillar framework, find, finance, manage, leverage that framework and go out there and do it. But for most of you, the fastest, quickest and best way that you can move forward is to do it with us. Now, what I mean by that is allow us to help you. Now, how do we help you? Well, as I said at the top of today's show, um, we've got a number of businesses um, all geared towards helping you create a home. So it really depends where you need that help within those three frameworks. Is it finding the right property, getting the right property? Is it on the finance? Is it managing um, your lifestyle or managing that investment property? So depending on where you need the most help in those uh, three key pillars is really where we can help you leverage. And we can do all, all three of them for you if that's what you need. So how do you do that? Well, I don't know a lot about you. Um, you don't know a lot about us, but ultimately the people that we can help are those that are prepared to get involved, do the work, um, understand this concept of actionable knowledge, you know, building up your own database of information so you know what steps to take and when to take them. Um, and then ultimately, you've actually got to be able to take the action, um, get involved and actually do what you know you need to do to get those results. So if that sounds like you, then definitely you're the right person and the right fit for us. Um, if you're unsure if we're the right fit for you, well, that's fair enough because I don't know a lot about you um, you know, we've had a few questions come in. I've seen some familiar faces. I know some of you, but for most of you, this might be your first time um, joining us. So um, what I've thought about, the best way that we can help you and get a good understanding of we're the right fit for you um, is to catch up one-on-one. -on -one. So we can do that either face-to-face. -face, we can do it over Zoom like we're doing today. We can do it over um, a FaceTime call, WhatsApp, WeChat, however you like to do it. Um, and what we'd like to do is have about 15 to 20 minutes where we really get to know a little bit more about you. Um, you can ask us more questions and get a better understanding as to how you might be the right fit, what part of our business can deliver the most value to you. But it's a very, very small investment I'm asking from you 
but I guarantee that you will leave this session with value. So we'll give you some immediate things that you can implement straight away, regardless of whether you want to move forward with us or not. Um, and obviously we'll set out a bit more of a medium term framework as to how we can work together. Um, and I think it is really, really important that, uh, that you think about what it is you want to do and think about what a small commitment I'm asking from you, only 15 to 20 minutes. Um, and I'm guaranteeing you that you'll have something you can walk out there and implement immediately. Um, so how do you do this? Well, if you want to catch up with, um, with someone from my team and run through this, it's really, really simple. There's three ways you can do it. There should be a link in the chat if you're on Zoom. Um, you should be able to find this uh, being redirected on the web browser page when you logged in, or if you're on Facebook, it should be there on our home page. Lastly, for those of you that registered with your email addresses, um, I will send you a follow-up email after this with that link that you can book one of those sessions just in case you don't have your diary with you or you want to procrastinate. Well, what I recommend you do, take the time now, put your sandwich down for a moment, jump on, book one of these sessions. If it doesn't work out for you, you can always cancel it, but I don't want you to miss out because I know it's the people that take these steps now that will see the results the quickest and fastest. Now, before I let you go, um, I just want to tell you about a story and a time that I had uh, earlier in 2021. About July, middle of winter here in Melbourne, freezing cold. I was lucky enough to get up to Hamilton Island for about a week with my family. And this photo you can see here is with my eldest daughter, Isabella. Um, great time. We're at the top of the mountain, watch the sunrise and a really, really great experience. But it almost didn't happen because she asked me if we could go and do it in the morning. I said, no worries. What did I do? Set my alarm. It was at a crazy early time in order to get up to the top of this mountain before the sun rose. And of course, when my phone went off, what did I do? I hit the snooze button. You've all done it. You know how easy it is. Went off again. I hit the stop. I said, I'm not getting up. I can't be bothered. I'm on holiday. Now, I did what most of you haven't done or probably haven't done yet. And that is, I stopped for a second. I said, no, get up, get out of bed, you lazy, and get up there and enjoy this moment. So I did that. I woke up my daughter. We quickly ran to the top of the mountain. We got this great photo. You can see the joy on her face here. And it was a really, really special moment. And it was a great memory. Um, those of you that have got kids, particularly teenagers, will know that they hate you for most of their time. You've really only got a very, very short window when they're young that you can get these great experiences. And this is something that I'll always remember. I know how much it meant to her. Um, so what I want to implore in all of you is if you want to get these great experiences, you want to get these memories, you want to get what you want, you need to take action. Don't put it off to later because later equals never. You've got to be like me, be like I was with my daughter, get out there, get it done um, and jump on. So if you haven't done it already, jump on, book one of those sessions with someone from my team and I guarantee that it'll be the smallest commitment you can possibly make and still get fantastic results. All right, that is it for today's session. Thank you very much for joining us. As always, I know there's a lot on that everyone could be doing. So we really appreciate the support. Um, if you've got any feedback or any suggestions on topics you would like us to um, go under the hood and explore more, feel free to send them through to us. Jump on uh, Facebook, put a comment there, uh, send us an email, however you prefer to communicate, um, and we'll definitely put that into the roster and try and get hit there. Um, as I said before, next week we'll be going on site, hopefully to uh, run through some of the construction behind the scenes as well. So I hope to see all of you again next week. If not, I hope to see you again next month, next quarter or sometime this year. So thank you from me and everyone on the team and look forward to seeing you soon.